You know, not everything in tech has to be super duper complicated. Some things are just simple. So today I'm going to show you a couple of simple things that anyone can do on any router to get that super fast Wi-Fi and that internet speed. Okay, let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Liron Sega, where I talk about Wi-Fi and gadget and tech tips and phones and how to. If you're into that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button below and let's get on to today's show. Well, let's start by looking at the hardware. When you connect to your service provider, typically they provide you with a modem. The modem is the piece of kit that connects your house to the service provider and then out onto the internet. You might also get a router, and the router is the bit that gives you the Wi-Fi, it gives you that LAN connectivity, and that router is responsible for moving that traffic and managing that traffic around your network. Your service provider might give you a gateway unit or a combo unit, which essentially is the modem that's built in here, as well as the LAN, as well as the Wi-Fi, all in one piece of hardware. So here's the thing, these routers and these modems are actually mini computers minus the keyboard and mouse of course. And just like your normal computer and your normal phone, they're run by an operating system. The operating system is responsible for absolutely everything from setting up your users, setting up the Wi-Fi, managing the traffic, creating the firewall and giving you that beautiful internet connectivity. It does a lot. So what do you do when your computer starts misbehaving, becomes sluggish, you switch it off and switch it back on again. Well, same thing needs to happen to your router and your modem. You need to start getting into a habit of purposefully switching it off and switching it back on again, but with that 30 second twist, which I'll get to shortly. So why does rebooting your router and your modem actually help? Well, just like your computer, things get run in memory. They get written to the hard drive. Same thing happens on the routers, but unlike your computer, where you can simply add more RAM, buy a bigger hard drive, giving the operating system more room to breathe, you cannot do that with your router or your modem. Whilst the router software is designed to keep it running as efficiently as possible, it still is susceptible to some failures like crashes and things do become corrupt. When you reboot your router, you're giving the operating system a nice fresh start. Oh, it's important to note that when I say rebooting, I do not mean resetting. When you reset your router, you're setting it back to factory default. In other words, you're putting the router in the same state that it was when it left the factory and you have to set the entire thing up again. A reboot simply switches it off and switches it back on again after you wait those 30 seconds. Now, speaking of 30 seconds, a lot of people say, well, why do I have to wait 30 seconds? Why can't I simply power off and power back on again? Well, if you've ever had a power dip in your house, you'll notice that the light on the TV still remains on. The light on the router still remains on. A lot of our gadgets and our electronics these days are actually come built in with some short life batteries and super capacitors in there. So therefore waiting the entire 30 seconds gives the system the ability to really shut down. There's no power, nothing is kept in memory, allowing the system to really have that nice fresh start. The difference between a nice fast Wi-Fi and a not fast Wi-Fi can actually be those 30 seconds. Okay, so how do you shut your router and your modem safely? Well, ideally you should be able to log into the console, log into the interface, find the ability to shut everything down. That's the safest way to do that. Now, if your router doesn't have that ability, well, you don't have much choice. You simply go to the back of the router, press the off switch, and it will switch off. In my house, I do this quite regularly, probably a good two or three times a week, but I keep forgetting to do that. So what I do is I look in my router software. Some of them actually have a scheduler that allows you to automatically set times where you can shut down the router and switch it back on again. Typically, I set mine for like four in the morning when I shouldn't be working. So if your router doesn't have a scheduler, two pro tips that you can do, go find yourself one of those analog timers that you stick into the wall, plug your router into the timer, and then set the on and off time there. If you wanna get super geeky, get yourself one of those smart plugs, they're super cool to have anyway, connect that to the socket, plug your router into it, and you can control it through the app. Those typically do have a scheduler, and then you can set your on and off time when you're not using the system. Now, another reason why your Wi-Fi might be slow is due to something that most of us overlook, and that is overheating. You know, your computer has fans, it has liquid cooling, these routers don't. 
At best, they were kind of designed to allow maximum airflow to go through them to keep the system nice and cool. Now, admittedly, these are not the prettiest looking of devices, so people actually shove them in cupboards, they sandwich them between books. I even had someone who wrapped theirs in a tablecloth. And of course, more heat that builds up causes lots of problem. And in fact, you can actually physically damage the components that are in there. A lot of these routers are built in with safety in mind. When it reaches a certain temperature, it actually switches off. So something that you can do very easily is find a nice ventilated space, make sure that the router has got lots of room to breathe. And a cool little pro tip, if your router has one of those USB ports at the back, buy yourself one of those $5 fans that plugs into USB port and aim it at the router. Really cools it down, does a superb job. Okay, so you've rebooted the router, you've waited 30 seconds, you have found a nice ventilated place, or you did my little fan idea through the USB port. Next up, you need to make sure that your router software gets the updates. You know, our phones and our computers get updates regularly, which fixes bugs, closes security gaps, gives us new features, and we don't think twice, we install that, we want that system to be updated. Yet with our router, we tend not to go back in and do that. Why? So a very, very cool thing that you need to be doing regularly is going into your router's admin console, looking for the firmware update section. That is what the routers refer to in the software. It's called firmware. You click on the button that says check for new firmware. Now, most new routers will do that. Some of them will even do that automatically. If your router doesn't have the ability to automatically update or by clicking a button to check for new firmware, just simply head over to your manufacturer's website be it D-Link, Netgear, GLINet, Linksys, Cisco, whoever your router manufacturer is, look for the support I typically filed under there, find your router's model number and find the firmware for you. Then simply just follow the prompt on the site. Now, one thing to note that some ISPs actually don't allow you to update the firmware. They actually control that, which is another reason why I like to have my modem and my router as separate units because I want to be able to control them. Let's check out more Wi-Fi tips and tricks down here. Hit the head below to subscribe if you like it. Give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you in those videos. Thanks for watching and being here this long. Hey, see you in those videos. Let's go.